expand out that way. I can take off my mask inside, right? Yeah, you totally can. Yeah. I'm assuming that everybody is Okay, everybody. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming, and I particularly appreciate Rita giving me the chance uh, to be here. I'm going to make this a filibuster-free zone, folks, so you are not going to get any big um, speeches. And I'm getting out and talking to small businesses today. I got home really late last night and going to be flying uh, back to D.C. right after the summit on, uh, on Monday morning. But I really wanted to get out and listen to business owners like Rita because a lot of you may know that I'm pushing really hard for a billionaire's income tax. And these billionaires, many of them that you've been reading about, can go for years and years on end paying little or no federal income tax. Well, you better believe that doesn't sound like the way it works for Rita or her employees or customers who come to this store, nurses and firefighters and all the rest. They don't get to defer their taxes for years on end. And my guess is, Rita, they can't figure out a way uh, through any kind of tax mechanism to go out and borrow millions and millions of dollars to finance a lavish a lifestyle. So that's what I'm trying to change back in Washington, D.C. with the billionaire income tax. And nothing highlights how broken the federal tax code is that Rita, her employees and her customers, they're paying tax on a regular deals uh, for them, and then these billionaires can go for years deferring their taxes. That's how it works, and I'll be glad to respond to questions on it. So, what this is about, too, is making sure that community and my commitment and then I'm going to turn it over to Rita is to make sure that those billionaires pay their fair share of taxes we support employees that's with approaches for example like child care I heard Rita from uh, a woman at Fred Meyer uh, last time I was home. She came up to me and said, Ron, I love what you guys are doing for the roads and the bridges and the transportation systems. But if I don't have any child care, I'm not going to be able to make it to the bridge. So that's what I hear folks talking about. That was what I was talking about on the floor of, uh, of the Senate. And let me now turn this uh, over uh, to Rita, and uh, I think she'll tell us a little bit about what the tax situation is for her and some of her uh, challenges. Rita, please. Hello, everybody. Um, my name, oh, I can take this off. That's right. <laughs> um, my name is Rita hudson Vault, and you're all here today at Union Rose in our beautiful and bustling Montevilla neighborhood. Um, I pay my taxes every damn year. Um, without fail, um, and I do so happily because it helps provide for the things that we all need together as a community, as a nation. Um, I'm here to represent um, not only my own business, but other small business owners and um, the Main Street Alliance and welcome you here to my small business, which supports myself um, and my family, my employees, and many other local artisans and designers in the Portland um, area. Um, we carry an awesome selection of um, local designers, and we also make our own house line in the back, which is just right over there. <laughs> um, so today we're talking about small businesses and how small businesses are doing their part to contribute to our communities via taxes, and how the ultra-rich and large corporations need to be held accountable to do the same. It's 
totally unconscionable that we would continue to allow individuals and huge corporations to increase their wealth without paying into the system that supports them. Without the, within the Build Back Better legislation, um, we have an opportunity here to make real change, to solve tax problems that have led to a wide array of issues for our entire country. As a small business owner and a mother myself, um, I can't stress how important it is to fund high quality childcare, um, <laughs> pre-K, paid leave, and healthcare. Um, having low cost childcare and pre-K would allow small business owners and their employees to better utilize their working hours without juggling toddler tantrums and business meetings. Um, it would allow so many more families the opportunity to work, just like Senator Wyden was just saying. Um, we can build roads, but we still have to have care for people so that families can work. Um, and that boosts our economy and our economic standing in the world. Um, personally, I know paid leave would have made a huge difference in my family when I gave birth to my two children. Trying to run a business and take care of a newborn is a very challenging task. I know I've, I'm seeing a lot of nods, so everybody knows that. <laughs> but with our current system, not working just wasn't an option for me as a small business owner. If paid leave had been around then, I could have had the opportunity to rely on my employees more and be there when my family really needed it. Um, we cannot afford to let the ultra wealthy pocket what they rightly owe while the average taxpaying American slowly slides down the ladder that they are so fairly trying to climb. During the pandemic so far, we've seen a lot of beloved local businesses close while the wealthiest have increased their worth by over $2 trillion. That's insanity. It's just insanity. So small businesses like mine applaud Senator Wyden for centering this reform for a more equitable tax code in his plan. The plan doesn't hurt average earning business owners or even above average earning business owners. It doesn't even hurt billionaires. It just demands that they participate fairly we are all in this together as a country. Small businesses, big businesses, individuals. The billionaire tax income, the billionaire income tax is critical to ensuring the wealthy pay their fair share and it will mean healthier for all of us. Thank you again to Senator Wyden and I'm going to introduce Ricky Gomez, who's the owner of Palomar. Well <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Thanks so much for, for coming here today. I want to thank Senator Wyden. Uh, my name is Ricky Gomez. I own a bar here in Portland, Oregon called Palomar. We've been open now for just over three years. Wow, that's <laughs> perfect timing. And uh, to say the last three years have been trying has uh, been an understatement. But uh, there has been some successes, so that's one of the main things I'd want to especially take <laughs> you know well let's, well let's just forget it yeah I want to thank Senator Wyden for his work with the restaurant revitalization fund um, that was uh, a lifeline to, to my business uh, I was very lucky to be one of the businesses that did receive a grant through the restaurant revitalization fund but only a third of those businesses who applied were actually granted uh, funds there and I know that's something that we're still working on for the future but talking here today about the Build Back Better program and the billionaire's tax, um, it's something that as a taxpayer, as a business owner, as a small business owner is necessary to see the disparity of income happen over the last year and a half is just, just shocking. And to see the lionization of these uh, individuals and billionaires and this almost celebrity lionization when we're on the ground floor struggling Every week, here we are, you know, over 19 months into this pandemic, and as a small business, we're still in it. We're still in it. We're still fighting. We're still getting through it, and we still need help. Um, one of my employees just had uh, a two-year-old, uh, you know, so a two-year-old born right before the pandemic started. And, you know, family leave is something that was very. Um, it's something that I provided because it was something I felt is necessary, and as a small business owner upon the the health of our employees 
We do it every day in our communities to bring on health benefits when but we do them because they're and this billionaire staff to have Senator Wyden here fighting for that back better pro we all know our margins are change. cargo here to for the small businesses. Um, my name is Bridget Blackman. I co-own a, a 26-year-old retail store in Portland called Cargo. Cargo is now a emporium of other small businesses. We are now home to over 12 small independent businesses, all women owned, which um, happened a little bit before pandemic, but a lot during pandemic, in part to respond to um, some small businesses that weren't making it on their own with a new sort of model of collective retail versus uh, retail that is purely based on scrapping for the same dollars. We worked on a way to come together and to uh, sort of lift everyone's um, uh, goals in a community-based model that I hope to see us embracing as we move forward from pandemic. I'd like to take a minute to define what we're talking about when we talk about small business, because we so often hear small business referred to on the state and national levels as businesses under 100. And I would say that we could retune that, maybe even rename it, because truly small businesses are businesses like these that are 50 or under. At Cargo, we're only 18 strong. So I know that small business means something a little different for the people in the room here today. And I'd like to also talk about how we build our businesses. We do that, and as we do that, as we add our members, as we serve our community, we do it with our hearts and our souls. We create a family as we grow, and we treat our employees as we would like to be treated. I doubt that anyone here has ever paid a low wage as minimum. I doubt that anyone here has ever put somebody on as an independent contractor just to avoid taxes. I'm sure that no one here has ever put anybody on a part-time position just to evade that, avoid benefits that could be paid. We build our companies as we would like to see our communities built. And we don't, we don't do that because we couldn't stomach that, because we don't want to be treated that way. We don't want our communities to be grown that way. We know firsthand the hard work and the very late hours. We struggle to pay the premium commercial rents as well as our triple net fees, which in fact pay the property owners property taxes when we don't own the properties. We, are, we do all that we can to create childcare programs, healthcare programs, paid time off, for our teams at, a, at a prices that are soaring without regulation and government support. Small businesses are on the front lines and we are struggling to survive COVID and to operate during supply chain issues. We reinvent our business plans again and again. We're pivoting so much, we're absolutely dizzy. And while we strive for, to care for our team, we strive to care for our families. Working on the front lines, our restaurants, retailers, and makers have been doing what we can to keep our businesses alive. Our teams are tired and they're suffering. We all need to care for them and to care for our communities. 
we are asking that we all pay our fair share and play by the same rules so that we can all prosper. I'm here to support Senator Wyden's effort to even, even the playing field for all businesses and all citizens. If we do not all pay our fair share, it is simply unfair, and the top does not pay into the system that it actually profits from. Thank you for this opportunity, Senator Wyden. Please bring our stories to Washington. True small business is the backbone of every community across this country. Sustain our main streets, and we will grow and prosper together. Thank you. Hi, from Hollywood. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Jaime with Molly Boy. Um, wow. Uh, I'm not much of a speaker, uh, so I'm just going to kind of keep this really brief. Um, and just say, you know, uh, starting the company uh, with two people and growing up to about, I think we're at 45 uh, now, um, and doing it the right way, and uh, you know, paying our fair share in taxes and, and and getting by and making things right for our employees and keeping keeping the economy go growing. Um, I just can't see, that, you know, hearing that these billionaires uh, know how to work the system um, that that's there to their advantage to where, you know, they're getting away with huge profits. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's a greedy world. And I guess the greed is taking over um, the loopholes and, uh, you know, everything that this, how the system runs. But uh, I'm just here to, you know, tell Senator Ryan, thank you for all the hard work you've been doing, trying to push the, uh, this tax and to please, please uh, get us in. I wasn't fortunate enough to get in the RRF, but please get that back into play. Um, I know that's a huge lifeline for us. Um, all the, the restaurants and um, bars uh, here in Portland, Oregon, <laughs> that we were so proud of having. Um, and, you know, to see so many just, you know, just disappear, it's just a sad, sad story for, for the community and for all of us living here in Portland. But um, yeah. So anyways, uh, thank you for your time, and I appreciate it, and hopefully next time we'll be a little bit better prepared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very well. And we're going to definitely be working on those restaurant uh, uh, funds uh, here in the last three weeks of December. Uh, I think this is going to go right till the end. And I'm just going to mention um, one other point, because people often come up to me at airports, wherever, and say, Ron, how can these billionaires get away with it. And I want you to know, the scandal is what is legal. What I have described is all legal. They defer paying their taxes for years on end. The other thing that they do, we know, listening to all of you, is they go to their accountant and they say, how do we dodge these income taxes every year? And the accountants say, hey, first thing you do is don't pay yourself a wage. Don't have any income coming in. So I was listening to all of you. You can't do that. Your employees can't do it. Your customers need their wage to walk in and patronize your businesses. So these are all kind of legal scams. That's the only way I can um, characterize it. And that's what I'm committed uh, to closing. Um, let me also say one other thing, because people say, well, does this mean we won't have the jobs and people won't be successful? Folks, having success and paying your fair share are not mutually exclusive. I'm very much committed to exactly what I heard you all talking about and what we want for all our businesses. Of course we want them to be successful. I don't think success and paying your fair share is somehow incompatible. It's possible to do both. That's what we're committed to doing. This is priority business for me as chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, uh, where we deal with tax uh, uh, issues. And I just so appreciate all of you um, coming out, because you've got a lot of sweat, sweat equity <laughs> in your businesses. And I just want to make, make sure that you can go out, as one of you said, on a level playing field. That's what we're talking about, a level playing field. Not one that's tilted so that, and, and we're talking, by the way, my legislation applies to under 
thousand people. And the Joint Committee on Taxation, which is the official kind of scorekeeper, nobody walking around the street talking about the Joint Committee on Taxation, said that if those billionaires just paid their taxes at today's rates in terms of capital gains, we'd raise $557 billion. The biggest sum of any that are being considered for how to raise money for the Build Back Better. So in a country of 330 million people plus, what we're talking about is under a thousand people, a thousand people who would be able, in my view, to pay their fair share and be enormously successful at the same time. So that's what we're doing. Um, we got camera, other press people, and then we'll 